The former president has said that he doesn't support the Chips and Science Act. You voted against it. If you have a Republican majority in Congress and Trump in the White House, will you guys try to repeal that law? Student journalist Luke Rado is going to show the rest of the feckless sellouts in the new media what a real reporter should be doing with their time in the field. I expect that we probably will, but we haven't developed that part of the agenda yet. Uh, we got to get over the election first. Would you vote to repeal or keep the CHIPS Act if that vote had came? No, obviously the CHIPS Act is uh, hugely impactful here. I will remind him night and day how important the, uh, the CHIPS Act is. How does that message get to President Trump, who's called the CHIPS Act bad, when it's really vital for central New York's future? I, I would say that, that uh, President Trump's comments you know, are important by a lot of things that got added to the CHIPS Act which was a lot of Green New Deal type programs. We were opposed to in that bill was that it had too much crammed into it and you had the Green New Deal stuff. And just like that, Rado broke a massively important story with one direct question and a pointed follow-up mere days before the election. Not only was one of the most powerful Republican officials caught on camera saying that he would support repealing a law that directly benefited the district he was campaigning in, but Johnson and Williams had to play cleanup and run cover for Trump's criticism of the bill. Speaker Johnson is one of Trump's most important MAGA allies in the country, so he will say and do anything to stay in his dear leader's good graces. And I think with our little secret, we're going to do really well with the House, right? Our little secret is having a big impact. He and I have a secret. We'll tell you what it is when the race is over. Your guess is as good as ours to what Trump and Johnson could be plotting behind the scenes, but the fact remains you can't trust Mike Johnson in the slightest, especially when he led the effort to overturn the 2020 election results in Trump's favor. If Donald Trump does not win. Do you commit to certifying the election results? Kristen, I'm a constitutional law attorney. I've de dedicated my life, devoted my life, and demonstrated every day that I will uphold the Constitution. We are going to do our job in Congress. A free and fair and legal election will be certified. And that is our hope and prayer across the board. Of course, I'm going to follow the Constitution. Yes, if the election is free and fair and legal, and we pray and hope that it is, there's a lot of work being done to make sure that's true. I think this one's going to be so large, there'll be no question. I think Donald J. Trump is your next president, and uh, that can't happen soon enough. Will you, as Speaker of the House, play your part to certify the election results, no matter who wins the presidency? Well, of course. If we have a free and fair election. We're going to follow the Constitution. I mean, I've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution. I always have my entire life. I've demonstrated it over and over and over. And so all this hyperbole and madness about, oh, they're going to try to unwind the election. It's, none of that is true. None of it. President Trump mentioned that we had a secret when he was in Madison Square Garden, and the secret is our telephone town halls. It's not some ulterior motive. The media went crazy over that. And uh, there's just too much emotion, too much misinformation out there. Everybody needs to calm down. I think it's going to be too big to rig. I don't believe for a second that Trump and Johnson's little secret is phone banking. Okay? That's way too easy. And if there's one thing you know about the MAGA community, especially people in power, they are going to lie to you, and they're always up to something dangerous or illegal, or oftentimes, okay? And in this case, they're probably encouraging individuals to do something on their behalf that is outside the law or very dangerous, harmful to other people in order to get them the win they want in the election. Um, and the reason why I think Trump and other Republicans have been very careful and selective with their language about the election, like promising only to certify a free and fair election and the too big to rig slogan is because they want to remind people, uh, look, the 2020 election was stolen from us. Joe Biden didn't, that, didn't win that fair and square. But now that we have all this, all this more, um, so much more support, it's too big to rig, right? There's no way the Democrats can cheat their way into office. Because we have tons of support that is going to outdo whatever the Democrats try to do. It's very intentional, okay? Like people may say they're ignorant, and there is a lot of ignorance, but they are extremely um, well-versed in how to manipulate the public or certain people, right? Health care reform is going to be a big part of the agenda. When I say we're going to have a very aggressive first 100 days agenda, we got a lot of things on the table. No, no Obamacare? No. No. Despite the dishonest characterizations from the Harris campaign, the audio and transcript make clear that I offered no such promise to end Obamacare. 
and in fact acknowledge that the policy is deeply ingrained in our health care system. Health care is on the ballot this November. Speaker Mike Johnson is making clear that if Donald Trump wins, he and his Project 2025 allies in Congress will make sure there is, quote, no Obamacare. Effectively, what they're saying is he didn't call for wiping out the ACA. He's calling for making changes to it. What is Mike Johnson proposing to do? That is unclear. His office declined to say what kind of uh, health care reforms he wants when I asked them. And they wouldn't say which parts of the ACA should stay, what should go, what should be changed. And remember, Mm. All of this comes in context of Donald Trump promising to replace the ACA. The question came up about Obamacare, and I answered it very specifically. I said the ACA, unfortunately, is deeply ingrained in our health care system now. Do we need further improvements? Absolutely. We need to expand quality of care, uh, access to care, and obviously lower the cost of health care. And I started talking about that. Well, they, they took a clip out of context and said that I said we were promising to repeal Obamacare. That's just not what I said. It's actually the opposite of that. Yeah. Um, and so that's the, just another example of what they, they have nothing to run on. They have no policies of their own. Aside from being a loyal lapdog to Trump and the MAGA agenda of harming working class voters as much as possible, Mike Johnson is also a major figure in the Christian nationalism movement, signaling to fundamentalist Christians that the Republican Party is willing to vote one of their own into a real position of power and cave to their policy demands. Which brings us to this secretly recorded meeting of pro-Trump pastors. Uh, we made tremendous progress. Well, look, three Supreme Court justices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Three hundred uh, judges all over the country. With you people, and we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to set up a faith office in the White House. Come on. I'll take, but uh, we'll have a limit of 10 per day or something. I know these people, they'll call me a lot. <laughs> and the other thing that we need to point out, fundamentalist Christianity has really shaped and influenced the entirety of Trump's campaign and administration because it goes back to one thing, white supremacy and believing that Christianity should be the only religion in America. Slavery was, or the Bible was used by white people to justify slavery, okay? And it's this notion that you are better than people who are not white, right? Who are not Christian, and you think you operate on a higher plane, and that's something that Donald Trump aligns with, even if he isn't the most devout man, even if he isn't the most religious individual in the world. But again, you know, Christian fundamentalists, you know, they take the Bible, literally, you know, everything, there's no, nothing wrong in the Bible. They take everything as fact. So when you do that, you understand how it's been used to harm people so much. It makes sense why we see that with Donald Trump, who's harmed so many people with his words, his actions, and his campaign. For Rebel HQ, I'm Chris Williamson. We'll see you next time.